Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. How's it going? Uh, the day is 424, 2022. It is a lovely Sunday. Um, so far, I haven't gone outside, but I can definitely feel it from the house. It's definitely warm. Maybe, just maybe, it's time to put the, the comforter away, I'm thinking. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Granted, then I'm going to start sweating and not be stoked about it. <clears throat> but I definitely feel like the older I get, the less I like being cold. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just becomes, like, my enemy, like, when it gets under, you know, a certain degree. Usually, like, under 50 degrees, I'm kind of like, this isn't cool anymore. Like, it's too cool, <laughs> if you will. Um, let's see, updates. Not too much. No new foods. Um, just been hanging out, loafing around. Um, listening to some other podcasts. I guess you say a quick podcast corner, uh, Rotten Mango. Uh, just got finished with, uh, their little two-part series on, uh, this, like, killer couple. Um, I can't remember their last name, but one guy was BJ, and I always, that's, is sticking with me so hard, because apparently his name was Benjamin, but he went by BJ. Like, that's what his, his wife wanted to call him, and he let her, and, uh, it's crazy shit. But yeah, um, definitely good podcast, go listen to that. Um, if you're like, if you like true crime... Um, it's definitely, like, a good, sweet pivot. Like, I feel like the host, she really keeps on beat and, like, has a good energy. I don't know. I, I dig it. Um, anyway, we can get to my podcast. The reason you're here, the reason you press play, which I appreciate. Um, I want to start with the Disney DeSantis beef update. Um, I got this from NPR, uh, but DeSantis wanted to punish Disney. Repealing its tax status may hurt taxpayers instead. So an update from where we last left off. Um, Disney had stepped up, you know, against the whole don't say gay bill. Um, you know, a bill that was really infringing on the rights of teachers and staff people to like, you know, talk about, you know, their orientation or their thoughts on the matter in front of school children or whatever it's really stupid really weird just more or less a a flex milestone for ron desantis to really like boost himself boost his platform in florida to potentially get a presidential bid in the future i I mean that's that's my speculation on all this um but essentially disney you know bob chapek initially was going to be quiet about it he didn't really want to talk he didn't want to start beef but um internal backlash internal protest things like that against the company for his silence for disney silence made him want to say okay no instead i'm going to pivot we're going to be against this you know we have people on staff that feel a way about it you know um i should have stood up i should have gotten involved sooner disney should have done that you know and uh that's our bad so then they got involved uh honestly it was too late for them to really do anything anyway it was already passed by the time they really started voicing anything really trying to do any lobbying or at least pushing harder um but um essentially desantis really kind of goes like you know full i don't know what the word i'm looking for here but like he just he just flexes on them like he literally goes okay you shouldn't have you shouldn't have mouthed up You're, you're being too woke and so he moves to do further redistricting because like it was like on tap to do for the state and he says oh we should strip them of their independent special district status um i believe they're part of like reedy creek improvement district essentially this was something that was established in 1967 um disney more or less has its own kind of autonomy which is really weird and creepy when I found that out. Because I'm thinking, like, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. Like, are you saying, like, Disney is allowed to more or less just govern itself? And the answer to that is, yeah, more or less. And it really clicked things into place for me. And I'm not sure. I haven't done too much research on this. You know, you know this is a limited resource podcast. Um, but, um, like, I remember hearing weird stories. Like, if you die in... Disney World or Disneyland, whatever. I don't know which one this is. Uh, I think this is the land, right? I don't know. Um, Like, if something happens to you, like, you don't necessarily die, technically, according to the papers, the legal paperwork, in Disney. They escort your body out. They say, okay, now it happened here. 
excuse me, but um, I like it's these kind of weird little special privileges that, that gives them their own kind of autonomy. And DeSantis, to be more or less on a petty flex, was like, yeah, no more. We're done with that. No thanks. Um, and essentially took that out of the paperwork, took that, out, uh, took that power away from them. Um, but it seems that from what I'm reading from this NPR article, that the um, residents of, um, what is it, Orange and Osakala, Osakola? I looked at the pronunciation and I'm still botching it. Thank you. Thank you, Milwaukee's best. You're really kicking in right now. Um, uh, but those counties essentially are now going to have to inherit not only the tax, um, but also the debt that um, Disney puts up and deals with on its own. Essentially, they were calling their own shots, setting up their own tax system, and then paying into that and doing that. But now it's like, okay, well, that's that's a state problem. <laughs> We're part of the state. We aren't our own thing anymore. So it's a little bit of blowback in that way. Um, now, granted, DeSantis might be totally fine with that. The state legislation might be totally fine with that because they definitely went along and signed this fucking thing, vote, or voted this thing for DeSantis to sign. Um, so, I mean, this was it had to be really semi-calculated, right? I'd hope. Um, but essentially... Um, they might work up a further de- a future deal um, that, you know, they would still not have their status, but then might get certain exemptions, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. A little bit of a quid pro quo handshake thing. I don't. We'll, we'll see. We'll definitely keep you posted. But it was a surprise to me to see this kind of happen, but then not. Like, it's one of those things where the, the biggest surprise was, oh, Disney has special status to govern themselves? <laughs> like, that's that was, that was the wildest thing. Um to be frank, I don't really care if Disney has to, like, take something on the chin. They're big business. And like I mentioned before, Chapik, the CEO, was not really trying to get involved in the first place. Like, in his inaction, like, if he had acted maybe this way and was so passionate in the beginning, then, yeah, maybe something would have happened. Like, they have lobbyists on the payroll for this kind of shit, and they didn't use them until it was too late. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, but moving on to Kentucky... Uh, let's see. Judge puts temporary hold on Kentucky abortion law, clearing the way for services to resume. I got this from the Courier Journal. Um, also preemptive. This might lag out on me. This is one of those sites with hella ads. Love that. Thank you. Um, but essentially this is just a little bit of an update. Uh, previous week we talked about how even through the... Um, Governor Brashear saying like, hey, like I'm repealing this HB3 act. Um, they said, nah, nah, like this is going through. The legislator pushed it through. Um, I believe it was Judge Jennings. Um, she issued uh, like a stay of it. Um, not necessarily like fighting it on the constitutional grounds, but just saying like, hey, I feel like X or Y is wrong with this bill. I, I you know, it, it should be further reviewed. So more or less like kind of just like a semi repeal, soft repeal. Um, we've seen this kind of happen in Texas, um, where it's like, hey, Abbott, like, cool that you okayed this bill and everything, but this is wild. We can't, like, you know, investigate the families of trans kids. Um, let's hold up. Let's let's stop here and, you know, further review this shit. So, I mean, unfortunately, though, I do think that this is still going to go through. It's like a, it's just a temporary stay. It's like a 14-day thing. Um, I think, oh, yeah, I think the, the merit on why Jennings was repealing it was because like there's no okay got the judge's full name here sorry it's loading up uh judge rebecca grady jennings um is the u.s district judge who um put a temporary restraining order on it but um you know essentially it's 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 a good sign that hey like there's someone involved in the process who's fighting it but at the same time this is probably still going to go through um but uh, yeah that's right sorry i lost my train of thought she's fighting it over the grounds that like there's rape and incest like those aren't really in those like those are still included into this bill in terms of like it's okay like you the, the abortion is not okay and it's like eh. now granted we've talked about like alabama they don't care they don't give a shit <laughs> but what about the baby what about that fetus um you know, but I guess in this situation, they're saying, no, what about the person's right to like be like, hey, like I shouldn't have been in this incestuous relationship. I'm a kid or something like that. Or I shouldn't, you know, have had to deal with this baby. I was raped. Like they're taking that into account. 
So good. Um, just wanted to put that update up into the airwaves, though. Um, then there was a, a thing that came up with the whole mass mandate situation. Um, I'm sure if you've kind of noticed over time in America, things have really kind of lightened up, you know, um, slowly but surely it seems like we are kind of getting to the whole mask off situation. Um, I want to say, what was it like Monday night or Monday, um, middle of the day, maybe it was Sunday night. I can't really quite remember, but essentially there was a judge in Florida by the name of judge Catherine Mizell. Um, also I got these two articles from NPR and CNN, but essentially she, uh, struck down the travel mask mandate and, um, it essentially just, just like that, like, I mean, essentially this was going to potentially be lifted, I believe May 2nd or like sometime early May. So it was coming up. It was like a week or so away. We gonna have to, um, but, um, she said, no, fuck it. Like, let's just cut that shit out right now. <laughs> And, um, this was a Trump appointed judge, uh, which is kind of no surprise. <clears throat> Excuse me. There it is. But, um, you know, she wrote up a 59 page ruling, um, saying that the CDC exceeded, it ex- exceeded its authority and failed to follow proper rulemaking procedures. So she's really calling them out. Um, and this is like a younger hotshot judge. She's 33 years old. This is something that really is like something that like, Hey, this is like, you're making your name here. You really like etching in stone a little bit here. You, you kind of put the, the law down on the CDC. Um, but now granted the CNN article, it kind of was like, well, you know, mid through the week, people were talking, I've heard in kind of news, like start here. Um, they're really kind of saying like, well, you know, so what's going to happen, you know, is Is the Biden administration going to do anything about it? Are they going to appeal this? What have you? Because like I said, it's about to be over anyway. The literally the legalities of all this, by the time you even get the motion written up and everything and put up, it's already going to be past the deadline anyway. Um, But they did go ahead and file. Um, More or less, it was like for a statement, I feel like, which makes sense. You essentially want to say, hey, look, we do understand that like this was going to fall out on its own anyway but we made the extension we've been holding off because of the whole new developments of omnicron and those are things that i haven't really been discussing too much on the podcast you know i've already been talking to you guys to death about ukraine every week the last thing i wanted to do is talk about covid all the fucking time um but essentially this is um something that is happening that in certain places like philadelphia uh cases have been on the rise like um, Omicron has also maybe even shifted to another variant on itself. So, I mean, it's still an ongoing thing. People are still having to deal with it. It's another reason why I wanted to talk about what's going on in China, because they're still dealing with it, and they want to have zero tolerance, you know what I mean? Whereas over here, we're almost like the opposite. And we're like saying, ah, whatever, we're past it. We're like in a like post-pandemic situation, where it's like, mm, question mark. Um, so, I mean, we'll see how the appeals go. Um, but either way, it's more of a statement than anything else. So I did want to kind of put it up, talk about it, also talk about the judge. Um, interesting shit. Uh, also a thing that popped up on my, my actual Twitter timeline news wise, um, I got this from CNN or CBS. So it's one with the Peacock, CBS News, NBC, NBC News. I got it. Click, 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 click. I got it. I got it. I'm going to need that break. It's coming up soon, guys. Um, I got this from NBC News. A uh, man dies after setting himself on fire in front of Supreme Court building. Um, the Metropolitan Police Department identified the man as Wynn Bruce of Boulder, Colorado. Um, now, I haven't gotten too much research. I don't believe there was like anything on in terms of the guy's motive on why he did this. But, um, you know, Congress is not in session, but, uh, he, he just lit himself on fire, yo. Like, this shit was crazy. Um, they were able to get, like, a medical helicopter to him minutes after, you know, this was, like, reported or seen or whatever. Um, I believe it was around 6.30 p.m., but, um, no one else was injured, um, but he didn't make it. He died from his injuries. Um, and I believe they've closed the investigation, so I don't know if anything else is really going to pop up in terms of 
you know, like I said, the motive and things like that. Uh, if I do find out or see anything, I will definitely like maybe try to do a little extra update on this. But I was like, whoa, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna talk about that real quick. Um, moving to some international stuff before we kind of move to the down end, wrap up a little bit. Um, 33 dead and dozens injured in Afghanistan mosque blast. Um, so this is kind of something that's been kind of an ongoing thing. We report about it, you know, when you hear about it, when we can. Um, but essentially, uh, the Taliban reported that 33 people are thought to have died in a blast at a mosque in Afghanistan, Kunduz province. Uh, so, you know, I, to me, it always is weird hearing the Taliban are reporting these kind of things. Cause I, I know like, you know, shift back two, three years, that was definitely the enemy and, uh, in some spheres of thinking, obviously, totally, they, they still are. I mean, we're still having the sanctions and stuff on them in terms of, like, them infringing on people's rights and things like that in the country. But um, this bombing was done by a um, more right, radicalized version of the Taliban, like the farther extreme version of that, uh, which is, like, ISIS-K. Um, but... Um, Let's see. Yeah, most of the week's attacks were claimed by ISIS affiliate group and uh, Taliban rival ISIS Khorasan, uh, ISIS K. Um, but no one has yet claimed responsibility for Friday's explosion. So there's a little, it's kind of limited on the info here. It's kind of a short read. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is one of those things, like I said, I, I do talk a lot about Ukraine, but I do want to also try to talk about other things that are going on to uh, just violent conflicts and stuff that are still ongoing. Um, you know, like I kind of referenced earlier, the people in Afghanistan are really suffering. There's a lot going on um, there just with like the poverty and, you know, just the violence. It's just something that the people have to deal with on a day to day basis. Um, kind of a side note tangent, but um, in, you know, Israel and Palestine, that shit's raging there too. You know, they're. It's it's weird because I remember covering this on the podcast last year, and it and then you start to see the historic cycle of these kind of waves of conflict, where it's like, you know, you come through and you see that these three kind of groups of people, Christian, um, you know, Muslim, Jewish, are all trying to interact and live in this area, and it churns up this just unrest. And, you know, the issues that have just been kind of blanketed, band-aided, come back up. They bubble back up. Um, so, yeah. Um, crazy shit. Uh, speaking of some crazy shit, uh, the last big thing I have before I little close out. I uh, got this from AP News. Um, New Jersey Diocese agrees to $87.5 million deal, settle, uh, deal to settle sex abuse suits. Uh, so obviously yuck, ick, gross. Um, but the good part is that people are at least going to see some money. Um, they are agreeing to settle claims involving clergy sex abuse with some 300 alleged victims and one of the largest cash settlements involving, uh, the Catholic church in the United States. Um, of course, uh, the was the diocese of Cam Camden and it says it encompasses six uh, counties in southern New Jersey on the outskirts of Philadelphia, um, and the pain and the plaintiffs was filed with the U.S. bankruptcy court in Camden on Tuesday. So I guess this is going to be something that's kind of wrapped up in their bankruptcy situation, where it's like, hey, we're going to pay them out as we are filing for being broke. <laughs> Um, which is probably some kind of like legal trick to kind of like clamp this thing off and stymie the bleeding a bit or something somehow. That's usually how these things go. Why people file for the bankruptcy. Um, but I believe you're up to like the age of 55 and then like there's like a timeline uh, of like availability from when you've realized. Yeah, the realization seven years of their first realization that the abuse caused them harm. Um, and then, let's see, abuse survivors who filed a claim in the bankruptcy could get 
thousand dollars so that's cool that's good um granted i often hear in these kind of situations that by the time the money trickles down to the actual uh person who filed the claim like the person the victim um or the family of the victim because i mean a lot of these things have kind of dragged on and on and on and on and on i mean most of the priests that were list were listed who did the did this fucking gross shit are dead already they lived a full fucking life um but usually the returns are small no matter what which kind of fucking sucks um but good to see that you know someone got their bag from this fucking crazy crap of shit you know uh i'm a person who comes from a religion not catholic but i came from you know not a nominational christian uh i do believe that religion is a great thing but kind of over what the last two stories i mentioned religion causes so much unrest over over things and it also then allows people human beings to do decrepit shit with a veil of protection um and it's really fucking sad to see that just you know, sucked under the rug for years and years and years and years, and then finally dealt with with like, oh, here's a bag of money. Are we okay now? Sorry, sorry, but you know, it is what it is. I try not to get in the weeds over that kind of shit. I do think that religion has good things too. It's it's a double edged sword. Um, but yeah, uh, I want to close out. I don't have an official article here. I'm kind of just going free form, but I did want to do a little update on my smoke break, um, if you will, about the Elon Musk thing. Ooh, yeah. Okay. And we're back. Um, so Elon Musk currently, he's poking fun at uh, Bill Gates. Um, if, you, if you go on the search today, it's, it's the, the shit has already kind of shifted to like him now just talking shit about Bill Gates. And like now trying, I guess, I don't know, people are now talking about, well, you should care more about how Bill Gates is like way worse than Elon Musk. Did you know Bill Gates bought a bunch of farmland? Yeah, Bill Gates is bad. All these people are bad. I don't care if they're quote-unquote philanthropists. They're shitty people. Um, But anyway, back to the update. Essentially, Elon Musk uh, made his bid. He more or less showed receipts like he's like hey half this money is going to come from like chase they're fronting me alone for like this then the rest is coming out of my pocket i'm ready to make the deal for this takeover twitter i'm ready to do it um but essentially the board has been doing their own kind of scheming and they did a thing that was more or less like a poison pill and uh that's a very dramatic thing to say but essentially in the business stock world what we're talking about here is they diluted their stocks even further um and made them i guess more so so that's more stocks for him to like have to buy so it's like a very cannibalistic thing to do um and i'm assuming it's something that really tanks your worth when you're looking at that and you're saying like oh these people just literally made their stocks more worthless that's not good that's not what we want to see here um but it discourages him from being able to buy it and he might have to maybe put up more money i'm not sure there i'm kind of getting out of my depth here in terms of the economy on stocks and all this fucking shit but um so yeah there's that that happened um i honestly i don't want to see elon Musk take twitter i don't think he's gonna do anything like helpful um as we just have we just discovered and established here, I've made it pretty clear that the hill I'm dying on that Elon Musk is a dumb piece of shit, and he just got very lucky with his money. <laughs> but it's amazing how far you can get with lucky money, right? Um, that being said, you know we'll see what he does in the future. Hopefully, it's a uh, you know less Bill Gate pregnant emoji memes and uh, more actual useful shit that maybe people can you know actually give him credit for and say, wow good for that thanks for making something better than a fucking plastic rc car that barely works you know well anyway, we'll see um that's the end of the episode more or less uh thanks for sticking around if you have um this is the show corner you know it you probably don't like it but um shout out to stephanie renee you're still the best you're still queen newsy thank you so much 
It's your efforts that help keep me in the game, put a little, you know, money in my pocket, which, you know, helps grow the brand, make it better. Um, it's five bucks like on Patreon. That's uh, patreon.com slash Isaiah News. Um, gets you also Discord access, gets you also a free shout out per month. Um, you know, whether it's something you're pushing, something you're doing, whether it's, you know, just a hi, hello, I love my wife, I love my kids, whatever, it's whatever you want to talk about. I, I, or if you want me to cover a specific news bit, I'll do what you want. Um, I got a Gmail if you want to send some feedback. That's IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Um, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. That's all available. Um, I'm really social butterfly, so you can get at me wherever, whenever you want. Um, I hope that your week is really good and awesome and glorious. And uh, hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. Uh, love ya. Bye-bye. Mwah.